Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, I was on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it yesterday. And I had a message from good old Nooblet who said, remember OP who stepped out of the way when the nieces and nephews tried pushing him into the pool? New update dropped seven days ago. So I thought we'd get back involved. I'm going to cover the previous parts of the story as usual. So if you want to skip bits of it, you know, timestamps always down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. So the story is from Scared Weakness 6250 who says, Am I the arsehole for jumping out of the way when my niece and nephew tried to push me into a pool, resulting in them falling in? Happened today. My folks decided to host a barbecue because I guess that's what older people do. I declined because I really don't like my two sisters, their husbands or their kids. Wife and I are child free. Mum then pressured the wife and long story short, we went. By the time we arrived there, were about 20 people there. My sisters and their husbands were already solidly buzzed, drunk really. My mum was spending 100% of their time trying to keep the nieces and nephews ages 7 to 11 more or less under control. My dad had strategically retreated to the whirlpool part of the pool with a small cooler full of beers. Wife and I made small talk with the miscellaneous people, ate food and had a frozen margarita. Sisters slash brother-in-laws took turns criticizing us for being late, not being in our swimsuits and screwing up the vibe. Whatever. Typical suburban summer get together. About 45 minutes in, Two of the kids ran up one of the neighbor's guests who was standing next to the pool and pushed her in. She was at the pool steps, stumbled in but didn't fall so only got half wet. She was clearly very unhappy about it but she didn't make a scene. Just went over to where the other parents were, grabbed their towels, dried herself off and left. Sisters and brother-in-laws thought it was all great fun. A bit later, I was standing a few feet away from the pool, chatting away with someone. I saw three of the kids running full tilt at me from the corner of my eye. Obviously, I was next. Not that it's terribly difficult to outwit young kids, but I just jumped out of their way at the last second, and all three of them ran straight into the pool at full speed. Most of the other guests, including my wife and me, started laughing, but their mums, as I mentioned, were pretty shit-faced, absolutely freaked out. Apparently, two of the kids couldn't swim, even though they were in swimsuits. Since I wasn't in swim gear, I stepped back from the pool and let the other people fish the kids out. The kids were bawling their heads off like they'd lost a limb. At that point, all hell broke loose. The four drunk parents were yelling at everyone in general, and me in particular, for nearly letting their kids drown. And also because two of the kids had been videoing the trick using their parents' iPhones, which were now at the bottom of the pool. One of my brother-in-laws got into the pool to try and retrieve the phones, but his BMI and BAC made that impossible. No one else volunteered to help, unsurprising given that my sisters were still bitching at everyone. I told my sisters it was their job to watch their kids and that if anything had happened to them, it would have been their responsibility, not mine. There were some pretty strong words on both sides. Wife and I left after the other brother-in-law fell over and face-planted while yelling at us. Now they're saying, I should have just let the little shits knock me into the pool and have their fun and ruin my phone. So, am I the arsehole? Side note, that of course never got out of the whirlpool. Opie then shared some information in that post about why he doesn't care about some of his family and said it's more of an oil and water sort of thing. I've never been close to my sisters. They're 8 and 10 years older than me. I also don't have that much in common with her husbands. They're okay guys, but I just don't give a crap about the things that are important to them and vice versa. I do know that the four of them are somewhat envious of our lifestyle. Both the sisters are stay-at-home mums. Both the husbands make good money. One makes noticeably more than I do. But both my wives and I have professional careers. We don't have kids and are way more responsible with money. As a result, we have a lot more investments, etc. And we don't have to drive cars full of kid debris. And we take nice trips once or twice a year. It definitely grates on both sisters and by extension, their husbands. So we get some petty behavior from them on an ongoing basis. Overall, neither my wife nor I enjoy their company, which is why I wanted to skip the get together. Just not worth it to me, but my wife is a positive person and is usually happy to see them. Opie adds information about the kids and says the kids are fine. By the time I left, they were inside watching TV. I think they're seven, nine, 10, 10, and 11. It was the middle three who played kamikaze with me. 
I'm guessing the 11 year old egged them on. She's usually the ringleader. One month later, Opie comes in with a first update which says, First off, my folks tell me that my nieces and nephews are all good swimmers and that they use the pool all the time. The seven year old is still a beginner, but he loves the water. My sister just said they couldn't swim, so I'd look bad. To be fair, none of the kids are allowed in the deep end, which is where they fell in. It was the two 10 year olds and the nine year old who tried to push me into the pool. After we left, the party ended on a pretty sour note. My drunk brother-in-law who face planted while yelling at me had to go to an urgent care place and get his face stitched up. He was too toasted to drive, so dad took him. Dad was not very happy about this. Late that evening, my sister started a group text and said some really nasty crap. The husbands threw in a few comments as well. Wife and I blocked the four of them. My mum called me. She was pretty upset about what they said. She and dad were in the chat and I don't blame her. Because of the text my folks insisted, my sisters and brother-in-laws come over the next day, Sunday, without their kids to get something straight and lay down some ground rules, mum's wording. The result was a contrite if unenthusiastic apology from the siblings via my mum's phone. I'm glad my wife was with me when they called. The hard stares kept me from saying what I wanted to. I just told them thanks and that we felt no need to discuss it further. Since I thought things were settled, I unblocked them. That evening, I got a text from one of the brother-in-laws telling me that the phones cost X amount and asked him when I'd be paying for them. What the fuck? I replied never and took a screenshot of his text and forwarded it to my folks with a note that we're done with this nonsense. We're going no contact with sisters and spouses and not to invite us to any more holidays or get-togethers if they'll be present. Then I blocked the sisters and their spouses again. At that point, the shit really hit the fan. Dad called them and ripped them a new one. Among other things, he told them the grandkids were not welcome at his place indefinitely. Since my mum regularly provides free babysitting, that got them pretty rattled. He also banned them from using the vacation house and told them that my wife and I actually own it, not he and mum. This completely freaked them out. Both of my sisters slash families used the place a lot, including having their friends up for a weekend getaways. This was very much out of character for my folks. It clearly had it. And for reference, I never wanted my sisters to know we owned the place. We bought it from my folks. They'd always wanted a place in the mountains. Keeping the ownership quiet was just a way to avoid drama with my siblings. A couple of days later, my sisters and their husbands came to our place unannounced to apologize in person. We were out to dinner and they left a note. One sister also called me at work too. I sent her a voicemail. We've decided being no contact is the best thing for the indefinite future and haven't interacted with them for the last three plus weeks. Personally, I'm done. They can go and pound sand and kick a rock too. Opie had some information on that post about how their life has been and said it's been less than a month, but I have to say that blocking them has actually made our lives noticeably more peaceful. I hadn't realized how much ongoing low-level drama they create. It's not toxic. They're not bad people. They're just tiresome and petty. And I personally don't care about them using the weekend place. It's ours technically, but we bought it for my folks. They control it and decide who uses it. When they aren't, we pay for all the operating costs and taxes. One good thing about this blow up is that we now know what we'll be doing with the property when my folks get older. I was prepared to take over managing it, allocating weekends, maintaining it and such. But now we know we'll just sell it. And if we want to go to the mountains, we just rent an Airbnb. About OP's parents. Yeah, my folks aren't dumb. They're pretty laid back though, very much live and let live. I figure they'll ease up on all of this soon, but that's their decision. We still won't be attending any family events for the foreseeable future. What sucks for my sisters is they're probably very worried that I keep them from using the cabin. I won't. That's up to my mum and dad until they're older. And it puts an end to one of the sisters' fantasy of building a compound of houses when we inherit the property, which I've known about for some time and had just ignored. Normally, the lots up there only have one area that can be built on. But this piece of property is way larger because it's at the end of a road. At least three houses with great views could be placed on that land. About nine days after that post, OP updates and says, Well, it's been an interesting last few days. I thought the shit had hit the fan before, but it was more like a fart compared to what's happened this week. Oh, I'm so childish. For this to make sense, I need to provide some financial context. My folks haven't ever been any good at saving money. I've been doing their taxes for years, so I know pretty much everything about them money-wise. The house is paid for and they have minimal debt, but they didn't save much for retirement. Both of them get social security. 
dad gets a solid pension and they have a bit of savings, but there's no treasure chest in the basement. I bought their current car for them after they retired as a retirement present, so they could have something nice to drive. It was the first car in probably 20 years they didn't lease. My sisters are convinced the folks are dripping with money and that our parents will be leaving the two of them everything since I don't need more money. They've never cared about saving either. Turns out my oldest sister and her husband, they have three kids, have been living beyond their means for some time and are in financial straits. They've maxed out their credit cards and are behind on their car leases to the point that one is about to get repossessed. He bragged in the past about making X per year, but it turns out to be about half of that. She confessed all this to mum on Tuesday because they need a loan and because, and this is a what the fuck moment from mum and dad, that for the last three years, instead of staying at the vacation house regularly, she's actually been renting it out once a month or so and pocketing the cash. We're talking $2,000 plus for a weekend and at least $4,000 for a week. With her being cut off from using the place, she's had to cancel one group already. She's now worried they'll lose everything. My folks aren't in any position to give them a loan. My other sister was aware of her renting out the place, but of course, hasn't ever said anything. I suspect she's done the same thing as well, because I went up there once to drop off an ATV I'd had worked on, and there was a family there who claimed to be staying there with my sister, slash her family, and that they'd gone to town for something. At the time I let it go, I figured she'd loaned out the house to some friends, but I've always wondered. I found all this out through my folks, who are pretty stressed out about it, mum more than dad. He's mainly just pissed off about it all. I know dad feels betrayed and I imagine he's embarrassed that he's in no position to help his daughter out. He did reiterate that as long as it's up to him, the girls won't be using the vacation home anytime soon. My folks let me know what's going on because they figured my sisters would pull a full court press on me next and they were right. On Thursday, my sisters came to our place again, without husbands this time, and waited outside the door until I got home. I had to choose between fighting with them in public then making a scene if I went in without them or letting them in, so I let them in. I got a bullshit story from the older sister with the younger one backing her up regarding why I needed to let them use the mountain place again immediately. They also said I've been a shitty brother and that I needed to step up and plan on paying for their kids' college tuition since that's what family does. I let them pitch their story, then called them out based on what my folks had told me. Things went to shit from there. There was denial, crying, cursing, yelling, you name it. I swear my ears are still ringing two days later. Won't lie, I said some really mean and shitty things to them, but nothing that wasn't true. They finally left after about an hour. After that, I took a shower and laid down. When I got up, my wife was home and her first words were that she had to block more phone numbers because my sisters were blowing up our phones from new ones. Folks messaged me yesterday asking me to call. I'm sure my sisters have told them bullshit version of what happened, but I'm not up to rehashing it yet. I'm usually a pretty energetic person, but this drama has beaten me down. I had just enough energy today to drive up to the vacation house and padlock the entrance gate shut. I'm the only one with a key. I'm guessing that will be enough to ensure my siblings leave the place alone. They'd probably die trying to walk 400 yards uphill to get to the house. Two and a half weeks after that, the next update. After my sisters came to my place, my mum and dad told me they were done with managing a vacation home. It sounded like the sisters had been pressuring them to let them use the place again. Basically, my folks handed the responsibility for the place to me and told me it was my problem from here on out. Up until then, they kept track of who would be using it and when they're taking care of routine maintenance, replacing worn out items, etc. In any case, they decided they didn't want to be in the middle of all this crap. While I don't blame them, I'm disappointed because the damn place was supposed to be something for them to enjoy and hang out in, and they use it regularly. Plus, I've never cared that they let my sisters and their families use it. Because really, I've always thought that was my parents' call, even though I technically own it. But now my folks are going to be in the position of not having access without me being involved, and that changes the whole dynamic of the place. I've taken several steps to secure the place. I already mentioned that I locked the gate. It was a heavy-duty chain and the best lock I could find. I also did a full reset on the door keypads and created all new codes. Security cameras got installed yesterday, which is actually pretty cool because the installer convinced me to put high res ones that look out over the valley. The system cost me way more than I thought it would, but the peace of mind is worth it. The installer also put up signs on the property saying the place was monitored by video. I also installed a heavy duty lockout for the water shut off slash drain valve. I hope to hell I don't lose the keys for it because if I do, it's going to be a bear to try to remove. 
I haven't told anyone but my wife that the water is locked off and again, only we have the keys. Last week, I got separate calls at my office from both of the husbands trying to convince me to let them use the house like they always have. The older one had gone up with some friends for a guy's hangout but couldn't get in because of the gate lock. He was pretty pissed and embarrassed about being locked out. I'm sure he'd have broken the lock if he could have. During his call, he kept bouncing between pushy and victimhood. At one point, he threatened to rip the gate out of the goddamn ground. He also admitted they'd been renting it out to a few friends that they needed the money. I was ruining their business and that I should refund their guest money. Me? Fuck that. I should have recorded the conversation with him, but I don't know how to do that from an office phone anyway. The other brother-in-law just sounded like he was being made to call by my sister. He didn't really put up a fight when I told him not to plan on ever using the place again. In any case, I told him that they can't use the place and to not ask again. At this point, I'm considering selling the vacation home. Wife and I won't use it enough to justify keeping it, and it's not like there's going to be any family get-togethers there anytime soon. I mentioned selling it to my folks and their response was pretty much, whatever. I'd more than double my money by selling it. The place consists of three lots with killer views and is at the end of a private road, but I'll probably wait for a while to sell. Doing so now will be an emotional decision. My sisters and I currently aren't speaking and I have no plans to initiate contact. I don't know what the status between them and my folks is and I don't want to. On the upside, we spent an evening with my folks last week, went to a new restaurant that was nice. No one brought up any of this crap. Mum did update us on nieces and nephews. She's spending time with them at their homes. Sorry this update isn't full of laughs or owns. That's just life sometimes. Someone says to OP about the entitlement of them all and, you know, couldn't you rent it out or sue them for the profits of all this? And OP says, I agree that my sisters and their families are very entitled. They're also in an extremely weak position in all of this. The place is a bit remote to rent as a long-term home. Plus, there are times during the winter the road is impassable, so staying there year-round is pretty iffy. There are a couple of permanent residents on the road who are at a lower elevation and relatively close to the year-round public road, but even they have to hunker down or bug out a few times each winter. Regarding making it a vacation rental, doing so would be seen by my sister as rubbing salt in the wound and would give them a reason to create more drama. And honestly, we don't need the money. The place is paid for, it's in great shape, it doesn't cost much to keep the lights on, etc. I did think about lawyering up and covering them with paper. It wouldn't even cost me much. A good friend is a property law attorney, but again, doing so would escalate things and give them a reason to create family drama. My primary goal at this point is to minimize my involvement with them and minimize any nonsense that causes my parents stress. I'm willing to take some short-term flack and absorb some expenses like the camera system to keep things contained. It could blow up again, but I suppose I'll drive off that bridge when I come to it. I don't think we'll sell right away if at all. It's more of a last resort slash personal fantasy thought than anything else. There's a good chance that come holiday season, my folks will reset and want to have the entire family there, which is fine. We won't be going, of course, but I don't care if my parents have guests there. I intend to keep control of the place for the indefinite future, though, which will be inconvenient at times because I'll be the only person with a gate key but I can live with that. Someone says the absolute like audacity and Opie says, yeah, the renting thing. I don't have words. One of the harsh but true things I told my sisters was that they had risked my property and stolen from me and that made them no better than common thieves. Their response was that our parents hadn't told them that they couldn't, so it was okay. I just can't think that way. I don't know about the spine, but thanks. I think it's more that I just don't care that much for them and because of all of this, I'm not having trouble caring if they live or die. That might be unhealthy of me, but I'm comfortable with my feelings. I agree about the arm's length thing too. We're staying no contact with them, all for the indefinite future. Someone said this is the calm before the storm and they'll try to guilt you again. Opie says quite possibly. I know one thing for certain. I'll burn that place to the ground before my sisters ever rent it out again. Financially, I'm pretty certain my oldest sister, who was renting out the place regularly, is screwed. I know they're trying to take out a second mortgage, but unless they can contain their spending, that will be a stopgap at best. I admit, I didn't realize until recently how much they and the other sister slash brother-in-law resented me over my financial situation, but I figured out it's pretty intense. Honestly, I thought both families were doing well. They drive new cars, have nice houses, everybody has all kinds of electronic gadgets, etc. But all of that was smoke and mirrors, at least for the oldest sister. I'm finding it impossible to give a shit though. 
I should probably be more empathetic about all of this, but the truth is, I really don't care much about my sisters and their families. I don't feel any real bond to them. Certainly nothing like I have with my folks or my in-laws. Heck, I'm way closer to my wife's siblings than mine. In any case, I don't care how my sisters live, so long as it doesn't involve me. Someone says, just sell it. If he says my parents, dad in particular, love the area the house is in, and it's close enough that they can drive there with minimal effort. I think they prefer I not sell it so they can continue to use it, which is fine with me. And they like getting everyone together so my sisters and their families will end up there. And really, that's fine too. We're not going to be there, and I hope they have a great time. But as to my sisters using the house again without my parents being there, never again. Information on moving forward, Opie says yes. This will probably be a long-term issue for my siblings, but they can't harass me if we never speak again. And all they can do is make my folks upset, and my parents are capable of dealing with that themselves. Eventually, everyone will get used to the new reality of the house not being available. I'm going to find a property manager in the area who can unlock the main gate for me and do other routine stuff, so I don't have to go up there when my folks want to use it. That will cost me less than the place being used by my sisters three out of four weekends. I pay all the bills, and the place will stay secure. And also, yes, my oldest sister can get a job and slash they can cut back their lifestyle. They probably won't do so until they have some massive reality check, like their suburban repossessed, but that's their problem. We won't be helping them. My folks can't realistically do so. I'm having a hard time pretending to care one way or the other. Like John Wayne said, life is hard. It's harder when you are stupid. One month later, Opie updates again, saying I hired a guy to manage slash look over the vacation home. He lives in the area, takes care of his folks, and manages a good number of the properties. Some are vacation rentals, some are weekend places like ours. He has access to my camera feeds and does a physical check on the place every week or two. I think he may have the best job in the mountains. He gets paid to drive around with his dog, walk around the properties and hangs out on people's decks whenever he feels like it. He also has a camera feed from a house near the start of the private road that takes still shots whenever a vehicle goes past it. $450 per month, plus he'll do basic maintenance and repairs on an hourly basis. He's friends with all the sheriff's deputies too. Got a lot of peace of mind from doing this, and he sends photos from his walks to everyone once or twice a week. I have to brag a bit on my parents. I got all of this from them tonight at dinner. They were getting pressure from my sisters to demand that I open up the vacation house to everyone for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving up there had become quite the tradition for the family, not for me or my wife. We've gone once in seven years. My dad refused to bother me about it because he knew I'd say no. They came up with what I think is a great plan, announced that they were organizing the Thanksgiving gathering and if everyone split the cost in advance, they'd rent an Airbnb in the mountains. Otherwise, they'd host Thanksgiving at their place or one of the sisters could host it. This caused a fight between the sisters because the middle sister was all for doing the Airbnb, but the oldest one doesn't have any money. The deadline to commit to the Airbnb had passed and it looks like Thanksgiving will be at my parents' place. Regardless, we won't be there. My parents have asked that we not sell the place for now. They decided that they still like to use it occasionally, but not until my sisters have come to terms with the new normal. And of course, they'd probably like it if everyone could get together there again down the road. But that's just not going to happen. I'd just sooner sell it and move on at this point, but I can live with keeping it if my folks do use it now and again. Plus, it'll be worth even more down the road. Wife and I have stayed no contact with my sisters and their husbands. Both sisters have called from new numbers fuck you google voice and left messages insisting that i meet with them for our parents sake to work out how everyone can use the family vacation home they called my wife too i'm glad i was already in the habit of not answering calls if i don't recognize the number i honestly don't know if they're delusional or if they think they can bully me into giving them access again don't really care my parents tell me that the oldest sister and her husband are getting out of the leases for their suv a big ass truck and they're selling their jet skis and some other shit they've never needed that's going to be really hard on her she's quite the braggart and won't like being seen in something older slash smaller slash cheaper my brother-in-law's identity is very much wrapped up with his truck as well he has a small tattoo of the truck company's logo which frankly is one of the many reasons why he and i never hung out several people have suggested i make the vacation home into an airbnb i don't plan to do so at least anytime soon I know it would make money, but it would cause an incredible amount of drama across the family and would stress out my parents. They don't need that. It would also be a hassle to remove personal things my folks have there. That stuff has nowhere to go, and there would be wear and tear on the place. 
I'm sure it takes some amount of time on my part, even though I'd use a manager to do it. Just not worth it to me. The OP comes in with her update 5 and just says, crap, this is one and a half months later by the way. Wrote most of this yesterday but decided to wait to post it until I wasn't so wound up. Waiting didn't work. I'm still wound up. Sorry if this rambles. So much has happened. Hard to write coherently. Things have gone to hell. I really, truly did not think anything like this would happen. Short version, my brother-in-law broke into my vacation home and were arrested. They've been charged with breaking and entering, destruction of property and communicating threats. All class one misdemeanors. I've refused to drop the charges. I might do so if I'm fully paid for the damage they caused. They were still in jail as of Saturday evening. I assume they're out by now. Things had settled down, at least I thought so. I haven't seen or heard from my sisters in over six weeks. My parents went up to the house for a week and had a good time. David, the property manager I hired, has worked out great. He's done a couple of repairs I asked him to do and I've given him a list that he's going to work on. He usually sends a photo or two of wildlife or a sunset to his clients every week. It was kind of making me want to get up there. Friday after Thanksgiving, my brother-in-laws went to my vacation home. They used an angle grinder to cut through the chain on the driveway and damaged the gate in the process. They've tried to get in through the front door, ruined the lock set and gouged the door badly. They finally got in through the utility floor door and locked internal door. They've also broken to the barn. I'm not sure why. When they went out through the front door, where they were met by sheriff's deputies and David. David gets notifications from the camera system when there's activity. He saw what was going on and called the sheriff's department. According to David, the brother-in-laws tried to bullshit their way out of it, but the deputies didn't buy it. Breaking into an empty house is a pretty serious thing up there. Usually it's meth heads who ransack the place and hawk everything. When the brother-in-laws were arrested, they freaked out big time was saying how they were going to beat the hell out of me, etc. Not smart to do in front of cops. David and the sheriff's office tried calling my wife and me to see what we wanted to do, but we were spending the day with her parents and had left our phones in the car so we could be in vacation mode. So they booked the brother-in-laws on everything, which is what I would have asked them to do anyway. Brother-in-laws called their wives from jail, who of course freaked out. They called my folks, tried to call me. They are blocked. Tried to find a lawyer up there to arrange bail. Not easy to do in a rural area and was a holiday weekend. Older sister has zero cash and a car to max, so if they made bail, my middle sister would have had to pay for both husbands. I knew they were still in jail as of Saturday afternoon. We didn't check our phones until late Friday, on the way home from the in-laws. There were a ton of calls and messages from my mum, dad, David and the sheriff's department. Talk about ruining a great day. I was in such a good mood till I looked at my phone. My wife read through the texts and listened to the messages, read them out to me and by the time we got home I had an idea of what was going on. I put my brain back into thinking mode, tried to get past my anger, failed. Called David and got the rundown on what had happened and how bad the damage was, resulting in more anger. I ended up Friday by calling the sheriff's department and telling them there was no misunderstanding. The brother-in-laws had absolutely no right to be on my property and I wanted to press charges. I didn't call my folks back, barely slept. I waited till Saturday afternoon to call my folks. They were both pretty rattled about it all. My mum in particular. My sisters had browbeat them into telling me that I should tell the cops it was all a mistake and that I wanted the charges dropped. I refused flat out, told them there was no way I'd do that until I spoke with an attorney. And also, not until I was paid in full for whatever it will cost to fix everything, 100%. My mum was crying hard by the time we got off the phone, which of course made me feel like shit. My dad suggested it was time for a complete start over, but also he thought they needed to pay for the damage. I haven't gone up to the property yet. There's nothing I can do and I'll probably go nuts when I see the damage in person. The photos are bad enough. I'm hoping tomorrow or Wednesday, but my job isn't one I can just wander off from for non-emergencies. I've left messages with two attorney friends asking them to recommend the right lawyers to go after my sisters and brother-in-laws. I don't know what I can do exactly, but I'm hoping to get restraining orders. I have all the texts they've sent me. That might help. I'm strongly considering suing them for the money they made renting the place. I don't care about the cash, but it will help make them as miserable as possible. The gloves are definitely off at this point. A couple of side notes. Brother-in-laws had no idea I'd hired someone to keep an eye on things or that there are cameras there now. 
My parents knew but hadn't told them because they knew it would just give my sisters a reason to drama up. There are signs on the property stating that it is being monitored with cameras and no trespassing signs though. My wife has completely had it at this point. I don't blame her. She's been more than patient about it all but she's reached her limit and was not shy about letting me know. She told me it's up to me how I deal with this but that she thought they all needed to be taught a hard lesson. Older brother-in-law likely won't face any repercussions at his job over this, but middle brother-in-law has a security clearance, so he might. I'm hoping that will be motivation for middle brother-in-law to pay for the damages himself immediately. David, the caretaker, has an interesting background. I know he was friends with some of the deputies, figured it was because they were all locals. I was wrong. He was a cop in a big city for years, was shot on duty and afterwards decided to quit and moved to where his parents had retired. He has some PTSD over it all. His dog is a certified service animal and is usually with him. I know law enforcement people tend to hang out together. I guess that's how they became his friend group. I don't want to see or speak with these assholes for the rest of my life. I know this is in direct conflict with my overwhelming urge to make their lives as miserable as possible. The OP comes in with another update five days later and says, didn't think I'd be doing another post this soon, but a lot has happened over the past two days. Short version, I think the corner has been turned on this crap. Thursday afternoon, I got a career delivered envelope at my office. It was a signed letter from both my brother-in-laws and a cashier's check for $5,000. In the letter they made, what I have to say was a really sincere apology. Among other things, they acknowledged breaking in, acknowledged it was wrong, said the $5,000 was to pay for the damage and that they'd pay more if it cost more than that. Also that they'd stay away from the vacation home unless my wife and I specifically invited them. They also asked, I do what I could to get the charges dropped as soon as possible because they both could lose their jobs and that they'd agree to a restraining order or whatever else it took for that to happen. There was more as well. All conciliatory, but that's the gist of it. To say this was a shock is an understatement. It was, obviously, a total 180 from their past behavior. I'd already made an appointment with an attorney to see about suing my brother-in-laws over the damage and to try and get a restraining order. I called him and told him what I'd just received and he agreed to meet with me at the end of the day instead of next week. He told me not to deposit the check. We met for about two hours. He ended up recommended the wife and I do a settlement and mutual release agreement with all four of them, sisters and brother-in-laws. He said if we went after them via a lawsuit that would almost certainly win but that it could take two years or more. There would be a sizable upfront legal fees and that we might never see any money. He also said that we could keep the $5,000 free and clear if we didn't let them off the hook. He's drawing up the agreement. It won't be ready until Monday. The agreement will include what's essentially the civil equivalent of a restraining order. I'd already asked my property manager to work up a bid to get the damage repaired. I called him after the meeting and asked that he get me as close to an estimate as possible, ASAP. Got that Friday. He thinks it would take around $4,000 to fix everything. Most of that is for the front door. On Friday, my attorney contacted each of the brother-in-laws, told them that what we were proposing and advised them to get their own lawyers. They both agreed to it. The middle brother-in-law told him that they could afford to either pay for the damages or pay for a lawyer, but not both. And they figured a lawyer wouldn't make any difference given that they really had no defense for what they did. His biggest concern was if the charges could be dropped. From what I can tell, they're willing to do anything slash sign anything to make this all go away. My attorney also called the DA's office on Friday to discuss dismissing the charges. Got the name of the prosecutor and left them a message, but has not spoken to them yet. He thinks I dismissed the charges because the brother-in-laws are paying up and they have no priors. But then again, he's not a criminal lawyer. Also said I should be prepared to drive up there Monday or Tuesday and tell the prosecutor in person that I want everything dismissed. He's also advised me to continue to be no contact with sisters and brother-in-laws, especially for the next six months and that it will be really important to follow the terms of the agreement when it comes to future interactions with them. I'm guessing that the brother-in-law's change of heart is due to them having figured out what's at stake for them, what it's going to cost them in legal fees and fines and so on. There's also the highly likely possibility that they could go to jail for up to 120 days, and as I've mentioned, one of them has a security clearance for his job that could be at risk. So this is their Hail Mary pass to keep their normal lives. This isn't a perfect resolution to the situation, but at least it will get me past the legal and financial parts of the shit show that I've been in for the past few months. I doubt I ever have a civil relationship with any of them ever again, and that's fine. What I want most at this point is to close this off, get on with my life, and never speak to any of them again. I'm exhausted from this. 
wife feels pretty much the same way. Kind of a side issue, but getting the written apology was weirdly a huge moment for me. Wasn't expecting that ever, but apparently it matters to me quite a bit. Money doesn't feel particularly important at this moment. I'm damn sure I take it though. Also, I'm pretty certain my middle sister and her husband came up with the money. The cashier's check is from the credit union of the company he works for. Once things are signed, I plan to make one more update. Probably just an edit to this post. I'm sorry for being so pedantic. Writing these posts has helped me clear my head and the feedback has, has really helped. I truly appreciate everyone's comments, insights and support and I really, really hope none of you ever have to go through this kind of nonsense. Next update, five days later. Tuesday morning, I met with my attorney, went over the agreement, changed a couple of minor things and he sent it to my sisters and brother-in-law. Included a requirement that they pay my attorney's fee, about $3,000. They weren't happy about that and tried to negotiate it away, but he told them they either accepted it as it is or there would be no deal at all and would proceed with suing them for the money they got from renting out the place, wear and tear from renting it, repair costs for their break-in, emotional distress, lost income from having to deal with this, attorney fees and whatever else we could. He also told them I would push hard with the DA's office to prosecute every charge. Short version, they came in and signed. I wasn't there. I'm told it was a pretty tense environment that the middle brother-in-law appeared to have taken charge and that at one point he told both my sisters to shut the hell up or he was walking away from the whole thing, making his own deal with us and the rest of them could all go to hell. They provided another cashier's check for $2,500, claimed that's all they had. It's close enough that we're going to accept it as the final payment. Attorney also told me that everyone was very cold and curt towards one another but that they all managed to keep it together long enough to sign and left without making too much of a scene. I drove up to the vacation house early yesterday to check out the damage and meet with the DA's office. Seeing the damage made my blood boil. It was so senseless. I was so pissed that I was ready to eat the cost of the repairs and do everything I could to ruin their lives. Tried walking it off and failed utterly. Ended up calling a good friend who was kind enough to stay on the phone for over an hour, letting me spew and vent. He eventually got me back to focusing on the bigger picture and putting this behind me and getting on with my life. Honestly, I'm still not sure what I want to do, but I settled down enough to get some food in me and I felt better. After lunch, I went to the DA's office. Hadn't made an appointment and had to wait a while, but got to meet with the assistant DA who's got the case. Short version is that since I don't want to prosecute and the brother-in-laws have already paid for the damages, that they are willing to drop all charges except trespassing, which in this case will be a class two misdemeanor brother-in-laws will have to plead guilty and pay whatever the fine the judge says. I'm also told that if they fight the trespassing charge or ever so much fart in public up there, that it will go very poorly for them. It helped that the brother-in-laws didn't resist arrest. If they had, none of the charges would have been dropped. I also went by the sheriff's office to thank them for getting there so quickly and everything. I wanted to thank the deputies personally, but only spoke to the dispatch person. I tried to meet up with David, the property manager, but couldn't get a hold of him. A couple of notes. The agreement includes a no contact clause. Basically, if any of them show up where my wife and I are or the other way around, whoever got there last has to leave immediately. No contact except through attorneys or mutually agreed upon third parties. They get to keep whatever they made from renting the vacation house, my big give, unless I have tax consequences, which they will be responsible for. And we release each other from all liabilities up through the present. There's more to it than that, but those are the high points. Wife and I will sign the agreement later today. After that, I can't talk about most of this, but I can talk around it. I think this is my final update. Not regarding all this nonsense, but I'll respond to the comments if I can. As I've said before, posting about all this and reading folks' thoughts and responses has been really helpful and has probably been key in me being able to handle this in a relatively healthy way. So thank you all again. And three and a half months later from the last post, eight months from the original post, another update comes in. Thought it'd be worth an update for anyone who's interested. Unsurprisingly, my oldest sister and brother-in-law have filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. While I don't care about what happens to them financially or otherwise, they've also managed to drag my parents into their mess, which I'm not happy about. At the start of the year, my brother-in-law's oversized, customized Pride and Joy truck was repossessed. Pretty embarrassing for him, I'm sure. Happened at work. This was their breaking point. Without the truck, they have to share a Kia my friends loaned them and they can barely fit in it with their three kids. Financially, they're fucked. 
they owe at least 125k, probably more, on high interest credit cards. They have zero equity in their house and have a couple of personal loans that I'm pretty certain they got under false pretenses. They have loans on their jet skis, ATVs and trailers. They also owe a chunk of money from defaulting on the truck lease. They hadn't made any payments on their credit cards or loans in months and were behind on their house payments as well. They got out of the lease on my sister's massive SUV late last year. They were upside down on it as well, so had to come up with the cash to do so. They also had to pay an attorney, the fine and court costs for my brother-in-law's trespassing charge at the vacation house. And they owe my middle sister and her husband money for bail and their portion of the damages to the place. As I've mentioned before, my folks have never been financial wizards, but they have at least been generally responsible. They're retired, the home is paid off, and they live off social security and pensions. Altogether, they get more than they can spend. Minimal savings, just an emergency fund. Turns out my folks emptied out that fund, cashed out their small IRA, up to 20k, and gave it to my sister. That let her catch up on the house payment and cover the negative equity on her car lease. But now literally every bit of savings my parents possessed is gone. Plus my parents haven't been paying for their groceries for several months and continue to pay for the insurance on the car they loaned my sister. According to my dad, my sisters worked my mum for weeks to get her to fork over the money. They'd worked on both my folks at the same time for a while, but my dad flat out refused every time. Eventually mum caved. She was worried that my sister would have to move to a hovel in some backwater town and that the kids would be barefoot and eating dirt. Dad's not happy about it, and to say there's some tension between them right now is an understatement, but they'll be fine. I was pretty disappointed when my parents told me all this, but I wasn't surprised. It sucks that they emptied out their savings to help, but I kind of get it. The way the bankruptcy laws are in our state, by getting caught up on the home loan, my sister should be able to keep the house. I tried hard not to say how I felt about this, and my sisters mostly succeeded. Really, I'm way more pissed about this than I should be. The worst part for me is that my sister and brother-in-law could now contact me and my wife without any real fear of repercussions. The only penalty the no contact agreement has is that if they violate it, we can go after them for the money they made from renting out the vacation house and related damages. Since they filed for bankruptcy, that's now not an impediment for them. I'm hoping they'll leave us alone, but who knows? Folks also told me that my middle sister and her husband have a, hit a rough spot and that he's not currently living with, with her the kids just a guess but i imagine he's had it with the whole family dynamic that caused this nonsense not directly related but on a brighter note i spent two weekends at the mountain house since the start of the year once with my wife and once alone both times there was a lot of snow it was incredibly beautiful and relaxing very therapeutic the place also has good internet service now which is nice plus knowing that i can count on david the property manager to keep the place in shape slash ready for us to visit and to help if we get snowed in eliminates most of the stress in owning it. My folks have used it a few times as well and get along great with David. So on the back of that, someone says, could you get a restraining order? I hope he says, if they start up again, I, I do indeed plan to get a restraining order. In fact, my wife made it clear to me that she expects a very hard approach to any BS from them going forward, which I agree with, of course. I had the security cameras at our house upgraded at the start of the year, just in case they come by. I also kept all their previous texts and provided screenshots to my attorney for safekeeping. If they cause any trouble at the vacation house, they are toast. The sheriff's department and DA's office have the full story and are sympathetic to our situation. Someone says if they lose their home, they may demand to live in the mountain house or with your parents. Obi says, thankfully my folks live in an over 55 community so they can't move in there. Plus the house is not anywhere near large enough for seven people unless everybody stays in the great room all the time and God knows where they'd park. Living in the vacation house isn't practical for them either. Again, something I'm happy about. With traffic, it's probably three hours from there to my brother-in-law's job. I'd have to have four-wheel drive vehicles to live there year-round too. Plus from what I understand, the schools there are not very good. I'm being polite. And as much as I dislike my sister, I say that she's all in on keeping the kids in good schools can afford their current house once they get through bankruptcy, assuming they can change how they spend. I think they'll have to. No one in their right mind would lend them money or give them a credit card. They won't be able to take fancy vacations or swap out his truck every couple of years for an even bigger one. Yeah, I admit that goddamn truck fetish of his really bugs me, but they'll live just fine. Not like a family of five is going to suffer when they're taking in close to 200k per year. Hopefully, 
I'm not being Pollyannish about all this. <laughs> Someone says they should have sold the truck and other things months ago. Opie says to be fair, and this is according to my parents, they tried to sell the ATVs and watercraft, but the value on those things drops like a rock the moment you buy them, and they were upside down on the loans. So they eventually just quit paying on them. Also, this reminds me, when they broke into the vacation house, they also broke into the mini barn. Turns out my older brother-in-law had stowed his two ATVs in it. Just guessing, but I think he was going to take them, report them stolen, and get an insurance settlement and sell them on the sly. I found out in January that the ATVs were there and paid to have them take them to my dad's place. I had my brother-in-law pick them up from there. Also, I don't think my brother-in-law was expecting the truck to be repoed. I think he was working to catch up on the payments so they'd have one good vehicle. The finance company must have just run out of patience. Don't blame them. He's a fuck up. A commenter says to OP, they must have been making quite a packet from their fraudulent vacation home income for it to impact their finances to this extent. OP says, I think they were grossing at least 50k per year, probably more, tax-free. It was never listed on Airbnb as far as I can tell. I'd rent to friends, friends of friends, etc. I base the 50k on the fact that my parents kept the calendar for the house to keep track of who was using the place. I went through the last three years worth of calendars and my sisters were using the place a lot sometimes for a week at a time. Supposedly, they were doing school-related planning retreats as, as well as just family time. I know similar places go for $2,000 or more per weekend, but at least $4,000 for a week. It can sleep six people in bedrooms and has a bunk room for kids that all five would stay in. Plus, it has two queen-size full pull-out sofas. If you push, you could fit more people than that. I think my sisters are just spendaholics, if constantly the newest whatevers, iPads, TVs, clothes, diets, you name it. So no matter how much they got, they'd spend more. So this was going to happen eventually. Someone says $125,000 on credit cards. OP says 125 k is my estimate based on my sister telling my parents they were racking up at least $3,000 per month just in credit card interest. She thought it might be more. Her credit was already crap before the bankruptcy, so I'm guessing they might be paying as high as 28% interest. If so, they'd owe about 125 k If they're paying a lower interest, the principal would be higher. But yeah, it's an absurd amount. And that $3,000 doesn't include all the other interest they're paying. And of course, there's the principal that just sits there. On the other hand, I'm told that they had a great time going to Disney World for a week, so there's that. Someone says if your parents ask you for money, make sure to make them sign something. Opie says, since all this started, I've given a fair amount of thought regarding my parents and their possible, likely, need for money in the future. I've come up with an approach that I think will work for me. It's a bit mercantile, but it's the best way I've come up with. If and when my parents need money, I'm going to do a formal loan secured by their home. Basically, it will be a private HELOC, H-E-L-O-C, home equity line of credit at market interest rate. They can pay it back or not, but when they go to sell the house or die, I'll be the first to get paid, with interest. This means they can waste it on my sisters if they choose to, but at the end, it will come out of the sister's share of the house. I'll end up paying for my folks' end-of-life care after they run out of money and equity in their house regardless, of course. It's not like my siblings will contribute. Info on the middle brother-in-law. Younger brother-in-law seems to be more decent than I've given him credit for in the past. I'll admit to a bit of myopia. For years, I've seen four of them and their kids as just one mass of inconvenient people have nothing in common with but can't avoid but he seems to have hit his limit and made some changes hope it works out for him and that he pulls my sister in the right direction and then the final comment that says how is the sisters so entitled opie says my sisters and i weren't raised to be like they are when i was young they weren't any more self-entitled than any other teenagers we all worked crappy teenage jobs didn't get spoiled it was really a very standard suburban upbringing we weren't super close, but we weren't enemies. Somewhere along the line of going off to college, they changed for the worse. I guess it could be worse. They could have become drug addicts or militant vegan volcano worshippers or whatever, but they sure became people I don't want to be around. And yes, the pool incident was the spark for this meltdown, but the fuel had been accumulating for years. It would have come out at some point that she was renting out the house on the sly. Things would have gone to hell just like they did now. Ooh wee, I forgot how long this story was. <laughs> I just kept reading and reading. It was like, Jesus, when's this one going to end? And it's like over 15 minutes now. I'm like, what the fuck? And like OP said at the very end there, you know, the Paul incident was just the final spark 
that made this whole thing explode. There was always something like this that was going to happen with this family. The absolute entitlement from those sisters is ab is just I is I'm blown away by it. I I shouldn't be blown away with the amount of stories we read, but you know, renting out someone's holiday home and making absolute loads of money from it. And after all that, still insisting that you stay at this place and that you're ruining their business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, if I'm being completely honest, I, I, I didn't have much sympathy for the parents in this situation either. I can't blame OP for, you know, if he's going to give them loans for their future, that he puts it against that house. Because I can see them loaning this money to the sisters to try and help them out. Very early in the story, it rubbed me the wrong way when, you know, OP's given them this holiday house. They were staying in it, etc. They're having a good time. But as soon as shit started to hit the fan... It almost felt like they just chucked the holiday home back in OP's face. No, you deal with it now. It's all too much stress, you know. When they themselves were part of enabling all this kind of behavior. Absolutely crazy. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.